Income tax 2021-2022 educator expenses. Get ready to get refunds to the max. Dive in into income tax 2021-2022. Income tax formula focused in on the adjustments to income, which you might hear called the above the line deductions or the schedule one deductions, keeping them distinct in our mind from the standard deductions and the itemized deductions. The adjustments to income are those deductions that are up top a subtotal to get us down to the adjusted gross income. In other words, income minus the adjustments to income get us to the adjusted gross income, the AGI, which is important because the adjusted gross income is usually the number that's going to be used or at least started out from in order to calculate phase outs, phase outs on things like like uh, deductions and credits as the income level goes up. In other words, those phase outs as income level goes up aren't usually going to be starting with just the top line, the income line, but rather the adjustments to income. So it's important to keep that in mind and be able to categorize where the different types of deductions that people may possibly get will go and the other implications that might be involved here. So for example, if we had an itemized deduction, the question there of course would be, well, are we able to itemize? Do we have more itemized than the standard deductions? If it's a category that falls into the adjustments to income, then you don't have that same kind of situation with standardized versus itemized deductions. Uh, but you also have that added kind of complexity where it could adjust your adjusted gross income or it will and that adjusted gross income might have an impact on like phase outs for things like deductions and credits for example this is page one of the form 1040 we're focused down here on line 10 adjustments to income from schedule one line 26 that's why some people might call it a schedule one deduction although schedule one is a newer form so people might not be as used to that at this point in time it used to be called many people called it above the line deduction which is something that uh, might have people have lived with for a long time so they might still call it that that's why you might hear that term so here's the schedule one part number two we're focused now on line 11 the educator expenses at the 250 the total of the schedule one part two will flow in back up here to the 1040 page one and flow into line 10. now the educator expenses is is a deduction that was carved out a long time ago for qualified educators and uh it was, it's a specific to a particular industry which is kind of unusual it kind of demonstrates the power of the unions the teachers unions uh at that point in time at least and we got the specific deduction but it hasn't really been tapered upwards with inflation as much so the so the amount of the deduction has been saying somewhat static for some time so if you're dealing with an educator then the question is well do they qualify for ba basically this is the general rule that you would say if you have a, a teacher of some kind uh, k through 12 would be the, the common example then you would say ah then they probably qualify for this educator uh, expenses deduction and the general idea would be that if they had expenses that they expended that were personal that they spent on their particular job then those are types of expenses that might go towards the educator uh, expenses here but there's a cap on the 250 which is pretty low so most of the time if you have an educator you could say okay they probably hit the cap of spending their personal money at the 200 up to the 250 in order to buy supplies or something like that with their own money but of course they want to be tracking the receipts and so on so they can justify that if there's any questions about the 250 in an audit but the general rule would be you know if you have a single filer and they're a teacher and they qualify as a teacher then you want to make sure that they could they could justify the expenses but they probably can so it's almost automatic that you're, you're generally going to say okay there's the 250 that you'll have here if they're married and there's one teacher it'll be capped at the two, 250 whatever their expenses are if there's two teachers then of course the, it could be the 500 is just basically the general rule so that's the you just want to have that kind of in your mind if you're if it's a qualified educator that particular item which is an industry related item hasn't changed a lot over the years are going up a lot uh, with inflation so educator expenses if you were an eligible educator in 2021 you can deduct on line 11 up to 250 of qualified expenses you paid in 2021 if you or your spouse are filing a jointly and both you uh, were eligible educators the maximum deduction is 500 dollars however neither spouse can deduct more than 250 of his or her qualified expenses on line 11 an eligible educator is a kindergarten through grade 12 so typical k through k through 12 
uh, teacher, instructor, counselor, principal, or aide who worked in school for at least 900 hours during a year. So <clears throat> it's pretty straightforward normally if they're a normal like a teacher, <laughs> but you can see you can kind of get into the weeds a little bit with, with other people that could be involved, instructor, counselor, principal, or aide. So educator expenses, qualified expenses include ordinary and necessary expenses paid. So that's gonna be similar to what you would expect from like a from like a Schedule C type of business. So in other words, we have an income tax here. If you had a Schedule C type of business, you would expect the types of things that you can expend, that would be a sole proprietorship, would be those which you used in order to generate the revenue because you had to expend those to generate the revenue. So they should tax you on the net income, not the gross income. If you're a W-2 employee, they don't let you do that because the, the idea would be that the employer is the one that's paying for everything that you basically need. And they're gonna be deducting the expenses and you're just working with the tools that they basically provide you. Obviously, there are many jobs where you might have your own tools to some degree that you're applying and, and you would like to have your own deductions, but that's usually the distinction of being an employee versus uh, an employer or a sole proprietorship, at least with regards to the tax code. So they kind of carved out for the educators the idea, well, if you spend some money of your own on educator stuff, then we're going to give you basically this dedu deduction specific to your industry. Obviously, any industry probably has the same thing where you spend your personal money on business related stuff to improve your job if, if you like your job, right? If you're into it, you would think, of course, teachers uh, generally typically like their job and are, are willing possibly to spend more money over and above uh, what, what the school provides at, at oftentimes. So that's the general idea. So then uh, in connection with books, supplies, equipment, including computer equipment, software and services and other materials used in the classroom, educator expenses and ordinary expense is one that is common and accepted in your educational field. A necessary expense is one that is helpful and appropriate for your profession as an educator. An expense doesn't have to be require, uh, required to be considered necessary. Qualified expenses include amounts paid or incurred in 2021 for personal protective equipment, uh, disinfectant, and other supplies used for the prevention of the spread of coronavirus. This was their big, their big move to <laughs> during the coronavirus. They added, they actually put out some, some stuff uh, saying that they made this big move that they included the fact that, that people could people could include the disinfectant and whatnot during the coronavirus thing but it's it's kind of the reason it kind of makes me laugh is because come on the educators are already most likely spending over 250 dollars uh, it's not like they needed oh well now i could finally deduct that last five dollars because i spent money on you know the teaching on the disinfective which is now on any case Educator expenses. Qualified expenses don't include expenses for homeschooling or for non-athletic supplies for courses in health or physical education. Qualified expenses don't include expenses for homeschooling or non-athletic supplies for courses in health or physical education. I repeated that. Uh, Non-taxable qualified tuition program earning or distributions. Any non-taxable distribution of Coverdale Education Savings Account earnings. Any reimbursements you received for these expenses that weren't reported to you in box one of your form W-2.